Joining us now is Daniel Hodges, who was one of the police officers who defended the Capitol from rioters on January 6th and was present, I believe, at all of the hearings so far. I've seen you, Daniel, in the audience there, and you were watching yesterday, of course, in person as well. So, first of all, your immediate reaction, because I believe you told someone yesterday, the President of the United States set us up. He did. He, um, he was told that people in the uh, crowd were armed, and his immediate reaction was that they're not hurt, here to hurt me, implying that they're here to hurt someone, and he knows who. And he wanted his metal detectors taken down so they could make his crowd bigger, and then he wanted to send them to the Capitol. So he did knowingly and with great malice of forethought send a mob of violent, delusional people to become terrorists and attack the United States Capitol and attack law enforcement, members of Congress, the vice president, uh, congressional staffers, all the support staff of the Capitol. They're all in danger because of him. How does it make you personally feel? We've seen those horrible pictures of you with your head caught in the revolving door, caught in that doorway as they were beating on you. You were injured. It was a terrifying moment for those of us just watching obviously, for you. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I mean, seeing uh, images of that day and footage always makes my uh, blood pressure shoot up, but um, I'm always glad that uh, the more evidence is out there, the better, because people really need to see the truth of what happened and uh, how, how important it is that we get to the bottom of this. I want to play for all of us the radio transmission that was played in the testimony yesterday from officers, Metropolitan Police, Secret Service officers, uh, it's the, the radio transmissions early in the day when the president and the White House were aware of what was going on. Mm. Let's watch. Make sure PPD knows they have an elevated threat in the trees outside of Constitution Avenue. Look for the don't tread on me flag, American flag face mask, cowboy boots, weapon on the right, right side hip. We've got three men walking down the street in fatigue, carrying AR-15, copy at 14 for independence. So that's, you know, what the police were communicating, obviously armed people. Here's what Cassidy Hutchinson said about it yesterday. I recall Tony and I having a conversation with Mark probably around 10 a.m., 10, 15 a.m., where I remember Tony mentioning knives, guns in the form of pistols and rifles, um, bear spray, body armor, spears, and flagpoles. Spears were one item, flagpoles were one item, and then Tony had relayed to me something to the effect of, and these effing people are fastening spears onto the ends of flagpoles. It's indisputable that they knew there were weapons in the crowd. How do you feel about the President of the United States at the time? How did I feel about the president at the time? Now, in hearing oh, this. Yeah, it's, it's not surprising. I mean, um, the president revealed his character a long time before January 6th and a long time before, uh, long time before he was even president. So him knowing that the crowd had weapons and sent them to the Capitol anyway, um, it just demonstrates how he doesn't really care about anything other than himself. And he would do whatever it took for him to stay in power. Do you think that people will ever be held accountable, people at the top levels, including Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, who was certainly exposed in this testimony uh, for being very actively involved in the planning of the attempt to overturn the election count? I have hope. I have hope that people in positions of power will be held accountable because um, the excellent work of the committee and its staffers are doing, um, the Department of Justice has been active. We've seen a little bit of that in them seizing cell phones and stuff like that. So there's there's something going on there, and I'm hoping it comes to some fruition down the line. The final part of the hearing, of course, was this uh, charge by Liz Cheney and the chair that there has been intimidation of witnesses, and it's we played some of it earlier. It's you know you know that he, the president, uh, reads all these transcripts, and if you want to be on the team, and it. It really does sound like the way, you know, organized crime figures intimidate witnesses. It does. It does. Um, it just really goes to show 
how important it is that the uh, the committee is doing what it's doing and how um, how valid it is and the criticisms are invalid and it's it's a legitimate investigation and the people who stand to suffer from it are afraid of um, witnesses coming out so I hope that they continue to do so one of the Capitol officers uh, who was testifying with you at those hearings last summer I guess it was that long ago um, He's decided to take off the uniform, he said, because of the injuries that he has suffered. Um, you're still an active member of the Metropolitan Police Force. Correct. Have things improved? In what respect? <sighs> in what respect have things improved? I'm sorry. In, in respect to communications and coordination between the Capitol Police, they've got new leadership, the Metropolitan Police, um, and, you know, for these kinds of events, I mean, there were there have been protests around the Supreme Court, and they weren't thankfully violent. But well, I'm just a uh, I'm just a patrol officer, so those levels of uh, communication are way above okay. my head. But um, I think that a lot of people learned a lot of valuable lessons from the uh, the six. So I have a hard time seeing uh, seeing things have not improved since then. Hmm. Well, thank you for your service, continuing service to all of us in our communities. All right, absolutely. Thank you very much, Daniel Hodges. Thank you.